Medieval Africa. It's a big old continent. Africa is a really diverse place. It is a vast and varied landscape. Africa has shifting sand dunes, vast rainforests, sweeping savannas, coastal plains, and large deserts, a really large desert. The continent is so big, you could fit three United States in it. Most of Africa is the sweeping savannas. This is hot, dry grasslands with uneven rain. This climate zone has a lot of different types of animals. You know, like a safari or something like that. Harambe. Most of the people in ancient and medieval Africa were hunters and herders during this time. Almost all of the African continent is on a high flat area called a plateau. In the east, there was a big crack in the Earth's crust and made the Great Rift Valley. They found some bones over there. Africa also has some really long rivers like the Nile River and the Niger River. Let's talk about African empires. African empires grew rich from gold and salt. Mm, not that kind of salt. In about 3000 BC, fishing groups called the Bantu started to spread out through all of Africa. By the AD 400s, the Bantu had settled almost all of Africa. They brought with them all their culture. So they spread their religion, which they had a worship of one almighty creator, God. They also spread their language and their work skills. The Sahara Desert prevented them from moving up into Northern Africa. At first, they tried to use horses and donkeys, but of course they died. You can't take a donkey across a desert. Poor donkey. But then the Romans came and brought camels from Asia. You can take a camel across the desert, they have big old fat feet that don't sink in the sand, and they can go days without water, maybe longer. Traders across the desert traveled in large groups called caravans. Not that kind of caravan, that kind of caravan. These guys traded salt and gold from the north for gold and ivory from the west. Poor elephants. This trade led to the growth of wealthy African empires. One of those empires is Ghana. In the 8400s, several trade routes met in Ghana. And of course, they took advantage of that. They were charging taxes and fees to cross those trade routes. Free money. Ghana was able to control the trade routes because number one, they had iron weapons and a really powerful army. Number two, they were able to conquer their neighbors. Hide ho their neighbor. <laughs> number three, people wanted to get to the salt and gold mines that were past their trade routes. Sadly, the discovery of other gold and salt mines in near the area led to the decline of Ghana. Goodbye, Ghana. But in the 1200s, Mali rises to power. The griots, or storytellers, tell of a great warrior king named Sundiata Keita. He ruled from 1230 to 1255. He took control of Ghana and the trade city of Timbuktu. Mali became rich in gold and salt. What else is new? It's always gonna be gold and salt. I don't know what else they have over there. In 1468, Sunni Ali took over Songhai, took over the city Timbuktu, and drove out the Berbers. He was able to make Songhai into the largest West African empire. Good for you, guy. Proud of you. This empire lasted for about 100 years until Arab raiders came with guns and cannons. You can't beat guns and cannons with spears and rocks. Nope. Benin is a kingdom of the rainforest. Benin was founded by King Iware in about 1440. He took over neighboring farms and he forced these people to pay tribute to him. Free money again. The rainforest kingdoms were known for having a surplus of food. They would take this food and trade it for, you guessed it, gold and salt and ivory. Gotta make pretty necklaces. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the East African empires. First up is Aksum, located near the Red Sea. Aksum became a prime trading center for the Middle East and Asia. In 334, King Ezin from Aksum made Christianity the religion of the area. The East Coast of Africa during this time had a lot of trade ports with the Middle East and Asia. It made them very wealthy. Some of the most famous cities are Mogadishu, Kilwa, Mombasa, and Zanzibar. That's a fun word to say. In AD 700, the Shona people founded the Great Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is located in southeastern Africa. This place had a lot of gold, copper, and ivory. In the 1400s, two kings, 
Mutota and his son Matope made the Great Zimbabwe a huge empire in the East. So those are the African empires that you need to know for this section. I hope you learned something. I'm out. It has vast, whatever you call it, the continent's so big you could, uh, the continent's so big you could, come on.